Well, hi, this is Custom Works, and I'm Clint Allen. In today's Tech Talk, we're going to talk about transmission coolers. A couple different options, items that I use in my builds. I'm sure that there's other options out there, but I'm going to show you some basic upgrades, middle upgrades, and then the Mac Daddy of transmission cooling. So let's head out to the Power Stroke Cobra truck and take a look at what I've done on that truck for an upgrade for the transmission cooler. So right now we are in the fitting process. Um, we're, we're dealing with so many different models of trucks here, even though it's basically the same thing all the way from 98 all the way up to 2007. You still got to fit all the panels. Uh, we put everything together. Anybody who has these wing doors know that these are a pain in the ass. After we paint, because we do everything off the truck, I will show you actually what we do to get these doors to fit the way they're supposed to, so they don't leak air, so they don't rattle. Um, most of you probably have never seen actually how to make a good proper adjustments on the doors. So we'll hit down on that later. Um, you know, we've got uh, a cab that's uh, 2001. The doors are off of a 2003. The front end is off of a 2000. So we, we have to go through and get them all fitted. And it's something that it just really irks me when I see vehicles come out of a body shop and stuff is just crooked, it's not been fitted, you know, come on. It. Anyways, so I, I'm going through and fitting all the panels so we don't have big gaps up here and but you know small gaps down there. This is all going to be adjusted and completely fitted and the hood's going to be perfect, stuff like that. So I thought I would let you in on that. I'll give you a quick look here underneath the hood of what's going on. So anybody who's found this video and has jumped, jumped aboard to see about transmission cooling and the options, um, this right here is our Power Stroke Cobra project. This isn't some kind of super power build. We're just putting a vehicle back on the road, but we're doing some of them tricks that I've developed over the years and uh, doing some common sense things currently. And before I forget, if you're new here, come on and join the community. Uh, my regular followers, I know that this gets sick and tired, but that's how you found me in the begin with. Join the community, please. And I made it real easy for you down in the description. I've put in my playlist all the sensors that are in a 7.3. What are they? Where are they? What do they do? What kind of problems can they cause when they're not working? Can they be tested? Our debunking videos, our hands-on videos, our tech talk videos, the tool videos, I have a massive collection that we're building up and the end result is that when I get done, you'll be able to do all the repairs on your truck without question and get everything handled. So let's get moving on to what you stopped here for. To help the performance to just uh, you know get her breathing a little bit more stuff like that so today I just put in the uh, big massive Wix filter good good airflow here built a custom intake I've seen some of the uh, intake options that they have from the leading diesel sites I've tried them and just shook my head they normally don't fit properly and people end up jamming and having to crush part of the filter underneath the hood, stuff like that. But anyways, th this is all custom built right here. Properly fits inside of the filter. She's gonna get a lot of air. I've got an air inlet coming up from the quarter panel right here and then I still have to custom build the cold air inlet coming around to the filter area. 
But anyway, just give you an idea of what's going on here. Uh, you know, aluminum radiator, 100% aluminum radiator, 100% aluminum air to air. Yeah, I know. Some people call it different. Depends on what part of the country you're from. But anyways, uh, before I put the air conditioner in and the reason why you showed up for this, let's take a look, see at the upgrade. So this is probably one of the simplest upgrades that you could do for your transmission cooler. Now from the 98s on up through 2003, the transmission cooler itself was uh, about this high right here. Um, now keep in mind that there are Ford engineers who go through and they calculate all this stuff and they usually generally are pretty much right on the head of what standard use transmission cooling needs to be. But over the years, a lot of people and the engineers have found out that it wasn't quite enough. So do you need to do this? So let's discuss that. If you're just a general driver, doing some weekend towing, boat, camper, stuff like that. The standard system is gonna be just fine for the automatic transmission. So that's what we're talking about here, transmission cooler for the trans uh, automatic transmission. Manual transmission, what's in there, stock is gonna be more than fine. You don't need to do anything more to the manual transmission. The uh, ZF6 and the ZF5 You'll, you'll never overheat that. You'll never overheat that in a million years. But the automatic transmission, that's a different story. This cooler right here is off of a six liter Ford F250 or F350. Uh, you can go to a salvage yard and get one. Uh, this right here came from a salvage yard, 20 bucks. You know, can't beat that. Did a pressure check on it, we're all good there. Yeah, a couple of the fins are banged up. But once again, we're just putting a car back, or a vehicle back on the road again. Um, this isn't some full blown build, which I keep on reminding everybody of. But if you do normal towing throughout the week, every week you're doing some towing, and it, you know, we're, we're talking something that's uh, 8,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 pounds, um, you're gonna wanna take a look at this and some of the other items that I'm gonna be showing you. This is the lowest end and the easiest upgrade that you can do. The beauty of this six liter transmission cooler is that it fits right in. There's no modification, there's no farting around. All you have to do is take out the old cooler, disconnect the hoses, install this one in place. I mean, it's just the bolts are right there. It just goes right in where the other one was. And then you'll have to make one extension tube or put a new tube on to get over here. And same thing over there. So you'll just be buying some more new tubes from the automotive store and it's just lickety split. Um, if you get the right size, you don't even have to get adapters. Uh, easiest upgrade once again but let's go into the studio and i'm going to show you plan b and the mac daddy of plan c of transmission cooling well it would be almost criminal <laughs> if we wouldn't discuss a known issue with the automatic transmission and the 7.3 power stroke and that is the transmission cooler bypass line that is on the transmission from the factory with the concept of when the transmission is cold there is a bypass valve uh, basically a spring and a ball that closes off and allows the fluid to flow from the out back to the in immediately right at the transmission allowing the transmission to warm up faster is this something that is mandatory? If you take it off, you're gonna blow up your transmission. Absolutely not, matter of fact. Every build that I do, that comes off. That is on the permanent checkoff sheet. That comes off 
and we put a delete in, which is removing that tube completely and putting in two connectors that connect to the input and output line that go to the cooler. No more problems. The issue is, is that springs fail or the balls jam up and it's in constant self cycle, overheating the transmission and wrecking the transmission. So if anybody's going to ask the question, ooh, should I remove that? Absolutely. Down in the description is one place that does carry them. There's all kinds of diesel sites that carry this. So just because I put down in the description this particular company i don't care where you get it from they all do the same thing so let's move on to option number two from just that simple upgrade that i showed you option number two is the dorelli cooling pan and actually i'm gonna let them show you their commercial Dorelli's Ford Transmission Cooling Pan, part number 14208. Designed to fit Ford E4OD, 4R100, 5R110, and 5R110W transmissions. Each transmission cooling pan is constructed from heavy gauge stamped steel and finished with a durable two-stage heat dissipating black coating. The pan's cooling power comes from individual built-in airflow cooling tubes. Each tube features an integrated turbulator. As air passes beneath the vehicle, it is redirected through the tubes and turbulators, thus transferring heat from fluid to air, helping lower fluid temperatures up to 50 degrees. This 6 and an eighth deep transmission cooling pan increases fluid capacity by up to 7 quarts, 30 ounces from a stock pan. Pan includes an 8th inch MPT temperature sender port located on the side of the pan for easy temperature monitoring. The pan also features a rare earth magnetic drain plug for extra magnetic strength, plus a reusable rubber and steel washer. Also includes a replacement gasket. A specially designed filter support allows the 14208 transmission cooling pan to fit several Ford transmissions. These transmissions utilize different filters set at different heights within the pan. To accommodate this variance, the filter support is pre-installed in the pan. For the E4OD and the 4R100 four-speed transmissions, the filter support positions the filter at the highest point. Check out the entire transmission cooling pan series, wherever cool is sold. So there you have it from Dorelli itself. And once again, down in the description is going to be their website that you can go to and order that if you wish. Same thing, a whole bunch of companies make these. Doesn't make me a difference in the world which one you use. They're all high quality. Um, this is beneficial no matter what company you go with. It adds anywhere from, depending on the company, five to seven more quarts of capacity. And the more fluid that you have, the less chance of it overheating. Simple as that. The uh, pan and that 6.0 cooler that I uh, showed you earlier, that can be in combination. You can run both of those, that's not a problem. Or you can just choose one. They're both easy to install, very simple to handle. And let's face it, a lot of people overlook the transmission when it comes to changing transmission fluid. Not quite as bad as, you know, differentials. I, I swear that Every differential we get, we have to rebuild because nobody realizes that they need to change their gear oil. But that's another video that we'll get into. Uh, the Mac Daddy here. The absolute, if you're hauling down the road and 
you need a no excuse transmission cooler. The Mac Daddy here, once again, is the Dorelli, and other companies make this too, but it'll be down in the link below. Don't care where you get it from. This is the fan cooled transmission cooler. Has a thermostat on it and hooks up underneath the truck. Uh, real actually easy to install too, but this is, you know, if you got heavy, constant hauling and you need the best cooling possible, this is the way to go. So I hope you've learned something today and you take it easy and you have a good day.